This is CounterPoint, and I'm Tanya Granik allen So many of us are still in shock over the recent terror attack in Israel at the hands of Hamas. We are left scratching our heads wondering how could this have happened? Why did this happen? And why now? And what is also shocking are the pro-Hamas rallies that have popped up globally. Why would anyone defend the actions of terrorists? What could be the justification? And what of the global response? How will Canada and the U.S. support their publicly stated ally, Israel, against this terror attack? And what will happen to the Palestinian people as Israel makes good on its promise to wipe out Hamas? Joining me now is Sarah Teach, Senior Fellow at the McDonald Laurier Institute, and Mariam Memar Dasadegi, Founder and Director of the Cyrus Forum for Iran's Future, and also a Senior Fellow at the McDonald Laurier Institute. Thank you both for coming on. I know this is a, a tough topic, but I think our viewers really appreciate having a very dynamic discussion about it. So thank you both very much. Um, so Sarah, I'll, I'll start with you. What a, a horrifyingly shocking week. Um, please walk us through the numbers. How many dead, how many are missing, how many unaccounted for? So these numbers are, I mean, they keep rising essentially as Israel counts bodies and um, figures out that people that are unaccounted for are in fact held hostage by Hamas. I think uh, the last I looked this morning, it was standing at about 1,300 dead um, from the Hamas massacre and uh, 199 hostage hostages in Gaza. And uh, some of these are also Canadians. I think there's at least one Canadian who's unaccounted for and uh, four, if not five, that have now, at, the t at least at the time of recording here, have uh, been declared dead. Right. I believe it was five dead and maybe three hostages, although I may be mistaken on the exact numbers. As I said, Israel's still sort of counting who is who is where and trying to account for the missing. Now, um, Mariam, was there any warning that a terrorist attack would occur? And I ask this in the most humble way because, you know, we all sort of woke up on Saturday and we're like, what the heck happened? Um, it, it To me, this came very out of the blue. Um, but so you share with us, based on your experience, was was there any warning? Was there something that was missed? Yeah, uh, Israel's um, normal early warning systems, there are alarms that uh, prepare people for uh, incoming um, attacks and uh, missiles um, didn't go off. And um, that was the uh, a red flag that alerted many of us who have been focused on Iran's regime um, uh, to think, okay, so Iran does have a hand in this and is in in at least uh, doing this the cyber attack probably um, that disabled Israeli systems. Um, the Israeli government is not uh, is not speaking to this, I think for understandable reasons, maintaining security. Um, and 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 not releasing information, although I I suspect that in the future, um, perhaps even in the near future, they will start to educate their own population and um, the world about uh, the Iranian regime's um, direct hand uh, in this in this attack and this barbarism. Um, I think that the fact that the early warning um, alarms didn't go off is an indication of um, Iran's. Iran's direct hand, but of course, even if there is no uh, specific um, link to this attack, um, this Hamas terrorist organization is something that wouldn't exist if not for the regime in Iran. So um, it's ideology, it's funding, it's training, it's equipment, it's um, it's it's modus operandi uh, comes from uh, Iran's regime, and its um, leader Ismail Haniyeh Haniye, uh, met with um, the foreign minister of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and um, the supreme leader of Iran expressed in no uncertain terms um, a lot of pride and gratitude for to Hamas um, for this attack. Yeah, and I appreciate that, uh, and I, I'm going to follow up with some more questions in our next segments about Iran's role and, and what it may or may not have done, because I think it's important for our viewers to understand that, well, in some ways, in the media, it might be portrayed as simply, you know, Palestine versus Israel. In fact, this is a, has a very broad regional uh, implications, if not global implications. So I think that's important. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, we only have about 20 seconds. Um, has Hamas done anything like this before, Sarah? 
Certainly, but not to this scale. Uh, Hamas has committed terrorist attacks against Israeli civilians since it was established. It was established for this purpose. If you look at its covenant, like its charter, which is publicly available online. Okay, I'm going to pause you there. We got to go to commercial, but I want you to unpack that in a moment.